Hi, everybody. It's Dee Reinhardt. I am going to be starting our webinar our, on payroll and reporting. If you have any questions during the course of the webinar, please type them into the chat pod, and Tammy or Datya or Fred, uh, Datya and Fred from DEHS, and Tammy from DCEO, or Chelsea and Lacey from Illinois WorkNet will try to answer them for you. We will cover the questions at a breaking point during the presentation. Uh, and we will record any questions for inclusion on the FAQ. Please check in. Uh, please check in on the uh, check-in list, whether you are with the DCEO organization or whether you are with the DHS organizations. Um, just to let you know, these uh, webinars are being recorded, and I will show you live uh, in a few moments where you can access all of this information for future reference uh, so that you can go back and watch anything that you would like to watch. Uh, we do record them and keep them in the archives on the uh, SYEP website under the uh, guide section. So I will be moving the organization check-ins out of the way. If you have not already checked in, please do so very quickly and um, I will move those back over again when we're done so that you can check in if you did, do happen to get here late. So this session is on reporting and payroll for Summer Youth Employment Program 2014. In this session, we will be discussing the reports and the payroll. And right now, the, uh, both of these items are in process to be um, added to the website, hopefully very soon. We're moving very rapidly to get everything working appropriately. And for the Workforce Partner Guide, you can access that by going to IllinoisWorkNet.com slash SYEP2014 and going to the guide at the bottom of the website. And you can access that via mobile, a tablet, or on a regular computer or laptop. Right now in this session, we are going to be talking about reporting. And it's the fourth quadrant on our SYEP guide. We, we can go to that section to maintain time records and payroll, to upload the expenditure reports, to enter outcomes for each youth, as well as run any reports as needed. First, let's cover the timesheet. And this is available in the SYEP guide in an Excel format so that you can uh, have the youth record their time and then verify it so that you can report it. Um, because it is an Excel document, you can change the date and it will change all of the dates uh, that you see along the calendar items right here. So if you just enter the, the date up here at what time the pay period begins, it will fill in the pay period end date as well as all of these dates. Uh, along here. You will want to export your file in a comma separated file, which is a .csv version. And that uh, needs to match all of the parameters that are on the screen right now. Or you can export the information from Illinois WorkNet. But please be advised that all of, this, all of this information must match the fields exactly, or your upload will fail. So if something is not working appropriately, please go back to this guide to make sure that each of your characters, the formatting, matches directly, exactly and then make sure that it looks like the sample that we have on the screen there. 
Also, you will be adding your expenditures to the website as well. And this will take place simultan not simultaneously, but one following immediately after the other in the same screen as, as you are uploading the payroll. And the better you do at matching your items on your payroll to your expenditure report, the less challenge there will be for DCEO and DHS respectively to verify all of the, num the numbers coming into them for your organization. Dee, can I interject sure on that point? Yes, you this may. Is, this is Tammy from DCEO. Um, what I'm going to be looking at is you're going to be uploading your payroll, and I strongly, strongly recommend you do the download from WorkNet to get the, the document because all of the client names and information will come from that. If there's an error in a client name, you need to go back into the system and change it. But don't change anything on the download. You're just going to put in your hourly wage um, and then your number of hours worked on that. But what I'm going to be looking at is I'm going to be taking that payroll download and looking at the total amount of your, pay, amount of your payroll. And then I'm going to be comparing it to this work, um, to your expenditure summary and payment request form that's up on the screen. And that 1,000 line item, use wages, what it's going to show um, on this expenditure report form is your youth payroll, plus you're going to include the employer's um, portion of the FICA and Workman's Comp. So say your payroll was $50,000 for that, that pay period, and your Workman's Comp and um, FICA was another, say, 3000 or whatever. That line I would show 53000 in this report. Um, so that will show both, like I said, the, work, the um, employer's share of FICA and Workman's Comp along with payroll. And, but the payroll um, that's reported on this along with the payroll that you've uploaded should be the same. Great. Thank you very much, Tammy. Our next slide shows us the way that this will actually look as soon as we have the payroll application up and working, we are uh, working on that uh, rapidly so that we can have this ready for the youth who have been working or who will start working today. The payroll upload is required on each provider's pay period, meaning if you pay once a week, you will need to upload your payroll once a week. If you pay Every other week, you will need to upload your payroll every other week. Youth can are able to work at multiple work sites during any pay period, but you do need to verify that each youth payroll is tied to the work site to which they are assigned. Payment to the grantees will be based on the upload of payroll information. And as you can see from the screen right here, we have some directions for you to follow, uh, referencing the exporting the payroll template, and also preparing your expenditure report. So please make sure that you follow the directions exactly. The next slide shows that you can enter the pay period start date, end date, upload the payroll CSV file that you can browse from your computer, upload the file, view the data, and make sure that it is correct, and then import the data. And then your expenditure report will follow in the same upload. You will browse that expenditure report and have it show up in this box. Once you have both documents in the filled into the form, then you will hit upload, and it will take both documents at the same time to the system so that DCEO and DHS are able to access those reports. Then you will be able to look at the period start date, end date, what the payroll was, and what the expenditure report was. And then you will be able to see a status based upon whether or not it was received, whether it is in process, whether it I can't read that word, I apologize, and or whether it was submitted to Comptroller. So once it's submitted to, Com to Comptroller, then you should be receiving a check for that. For that. Hey, and Dee, this is Tammy once again. Yes. Um, that status box is going to change some. It's just going to be um, um, not 
reviewed and approved because there are additional steps that DCO and DHS have to do to submit it to a comptroller. So that will be updated on this report. Okay, great. And and as we as we know, a lot of times if we're not showing you actual things can change. So that's <laughs> that's one of the reasons why we do screenshots and then show you in uh, technical assistance to make sure that you see exactly what is live. Um, next we have youth outcomes and one of the things for you to be aware of is that providers will add youth outcomes to the youth profile page. The youth do not do that. You will access the youth files from the dashboard, and I can show you the dashboard and how to access it one more time. <coughs> Excuse me. And then when the youth is complete, you will add the information at the bottom under the completion status under the completion status as to whether they returned to school, hired by the employer, uh, started in, enrolled in training, or whether they withdrew or exited from the program. Now this is something that you need to be aware of that youth who are in the program are only considered successful if they complete the pre-assessment, post-assessment, and have at least one payroll entered into the system. So please make sure that you are following these items so that we can make sure that all of our programs are successful. At the end of the program, youth and providers will pr pr submit success stories. So hopefully everybody is successful and we segue right into those success stories. Our plan is to have on the youth uh, application access where they actually go into their program, they will be able to submit a success story right along in the same area where they can submit their pre-assessment test, do their Employment 101 guide, as well as doing the uh, post-assessment or printing their certificate of completion. Employers, we anticipate having an option available for them to submit their success story on the actual website live. Very much like we can submit questions for the FAQ, we will open up an opportunity for them to submit a paragraph about their success and or add images into the uh, program as well. Uh, you are correct, Kara. At this time, you can only see dashboard youth and employers. As we add the additional options, you will see the additional tabs come up, and we will address those items in upcoming technical assistance sessions and or post them um, out in the updates where I will show you again and or send an email out as an announcement. On your dashboard, you can access the reports for the youth. We have many, many, many more reports that will be coming along. We're trying to get all set up for the um, payroll, et cetera, and then we will get the reports uh, coming along. Uh, Pam, no, you should not be able to see employers for the whole state you will only be able to see employers for your area so that um, if you have entered an, uh, an employer for your, uh, provi as a provider, then you will be able to see that uh, information, but not any of the other work sites across the state. Um, also on the dashboard, you can provide uh, an overview of youth status in the program. We, w we refer back to the dashboard regularly so that, so that you can see where you are in the status of everything. Things that are submitted are in yellow. If they are green, they can go ahead, and if they are red, they need to do something before they can move forward. 
reports, as I mentioned earlier. We will have an entire list of reports that will be available to you. Um, just keep watching for those updates. Our upcoming items, uh, next Tuesday at 2 p.m., we have a follow-up violence prevention webinar. We do have our webinar recorded from last week that is available on the SYEP guide as well as on our YouTube channel. And we will have technical assistance webinars coming up on July 9th, 16th, 30th, August 13th and 20th, all at 10.30 in the morning. So that's it for right now. We will go live in just a moment. Let me look to see if there are any questions that we can answer right now. Pam's asking, in the Southern 14, we are seeing all of the employers in the state. Who should we contact to get this corrected? Goodness. Um, Please send an email to syep14 at illinoisworknet.com. It is that email that is on the screen right now. Uh, Chelsea just mentioned that they are aware of the problem, and we are working to resolve that uh, with our programmers. So now let me go live for just a moment to show you one more time how to access a few of these things. Um, the PDF of the handout is available in the pod just below the chat pod that you're typing in. We will be recording this presentation, and it will be available on the archive that I'm going to show you how to access in just one moment. When you're on the Summer Youth Employment website, uh, we can access the guide at the bottom of the screen by going to Partners and SYEP Guide. On the guide screen, you can see our archived training webinars on the right-hand side, including our playlist of the four webinars from last week. We will get the two up from yesterday and the two up from today, along with our technical assistance, uh, hopefully uh, before the holiday on Friday. Under the archived training videos on the left-hand side, we have all, all of our resources here. On the left-hand side, you can access the archived training videos, along with some of the transcripts for the uh, violence prevention webinars that we did last week. If you want to see the handouts, they are in PDF format. So you can click on these items, access the playlist by just clicking on the playlist and seeing what has already been recorded. So this is a great resource if you want to go back and follow up with anything. That way you don't have to um, clutter up your email box with this information. It's all right here, right for you uh, at any time, day or night, that you need to access it. When we go back to the partner guide, we also have a frequently asked questions for the partners, meaning you, you providers. If you are looking at the guide and you do not see the question that you are trying to find an answer for, you can also submit a question by clicking on the box to the right, typing in your email address, picking what category it falls under, picking out the subcategory of, of what your question relates to, type in your question and, and submit. We will find out an answer and add that to the FAQ and answer you so that you can keep moving forward with your program. 
Um, Tammy, would you like to answer our question from Susan about what date can we begin having students work? Um, well, that depends upon your, which grantee you're with. If you're with DHS, their start date, I believe, is July 1st um, for the grant, grants. Um, if you're a DCEO grantee, um, some, most of our grantees received two grants. So one of them received uh, a grant that was out of state for, um, 2014 money and then out of 2015. If you have two grants, um, the 14 money could start June 1st. So, um, but, but if you have the 15, um, state fiscal year 15 has to start on July 1st. So it's kind of a confusing answer, but um, DCEO, you, it, you need to look at your grant agreement. Yes, exactly. You need to look at your grant agreement. And we got an answer in writing that we will add to the FAQ as well. Um, I will put, I will pop up a note screen so that you can see that in writing as well. Uh, additionally, on our on our SYEP guide, you can access a full list of resources. So if you can't remember where you saw something, you can you can find it here on this overall list, and it's broken broken down by category. Back to the partner guide. Again, we're going to go to the reporting page. And you can see here that we uh, know, Winifred, a medical card is not able to prove eligibility, only a, a food stamp card. Okay, back to the reporting page. We have the timesheet with payroll upload instructions. We will add those. We will we have an expenditure report in Excel and in PDF, and we will upload instructions about how to upload those. And then we will add instructions about youth outcomes entry. Now, when you need to go back when you need to go into the dashboard, you have accessed your SYEP guide. You need to sign into your SYEP partner tools. Once you do that, you will uh, be able to go to uh, the guide. Oops. Here we go. We will be able to go to the guide and go to the dashboard, and you will start out with the dashboard. I happen to be on the page for the last webinar. And it's thinking. And here we have the applications. So if you have uh, an enrolled status, they're either enrolled or not enrolled yet whether they decline the offer, not suitable, or do not enroll at this time. We have a block down here that we have completed uh, pre-assessments, completed or not complete post-assessment, and where they are with the work site placement. And here at the bottom is the completion status, whether they return to school, hired by employer, enrolled in training, or withdrawn and exited. Now, I do happen to be in the test site so that we do not share real data over this webinar. Uh, in, in the youth profile, you can sort by whether somebody is eligible, whether they are enrolled, and whether they have their pre-assessment complete. Do that search. And you'll see who the people are that have those particular items um, done in the system. And then once the worksite placement is up and functioning, then we will be able to sort by those as well. Um, OK, let's go back to the uh, questions in the odd from the audience and take a look to see what kind of answers we need to get. And while we're getting those answers taken care of, if you can 
make sure that you have checked in. Um, Julie is doing a follow-up question. Wouldn't a medical card prove eligibility for a TANF participant? Uh, if somebody from, Tammy, would you like to answer that? Yeah, I just put it up. To, uh, if it's a medical benefit only, that does not quali qualify. Um, you know, if they're see receiving other benefits, um, you know, like food stamps or, or TANF benefits, that would. But medical only does not qualify. Okay. Do we have any other questions from the audience? We've got a few people typing. One of the questions that, that we've had come up in the past is uh, how do you access the SYEP dashboard where the partner tools are? You do need to have uh, your work site set up, which almost all, all of them are, and then each person from the work site who needs to have access to the dashboard needs to have a workforce partner account set up. And um, Chelsea, if you could add that handout to the uh, reporting handouts, I would appreciate that so that staff can understand exactly how to set up their handout. I can show you how to access that from the guide while she's adding the link. Under Get Started on your partner guide, you can go down to setting up a staff account. When you click on the link, it will take you to a map of the state. You find the portion of your state. Uh, so maybe I'm in Jefferson County. I will see a list of organizations that are available through Jefferson County. And maybe it's uh, you can. Oh, look, it's in Energy, Illinois. Uh, then you select staff member of the above selected site. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. Um, under partner site, I'm sorry, staff member of the above selected site, fill in the rest of the information, set up. Then once you are done with that, please uh, email us at SYEP14, I'm sorry, SYEP2014 at Illinois WorkNet to let us know that you need to have that person to have access to the dashboard. Um, the handout is also available to show you how to accomplish this, is how to access SYEP Partner Guide instructions. So if you uh, want to have this handout, you can either get it from the guide, or you can, um, you can, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have that up there. But you can find it from the guide, setting up and setting up your account. OK, do we have any other questions? Um, let's, let me scroll back up here for just a moment. Can you have more than one person entering data? Yes, you can, but you need to make sure that the people that are entering data you want to see all of the information on the dashboard. We had a question at that when we were in Chicago. Um, if you grant someone access, they have access to everything. So you need to make sure that it is somebody to whom you want to give that access. So are work sites available for us to assign students? If not, is it still OK for us to have them start working? Uh, yes, we covered that in the 1 o'clock session. Worksite placement will be up hopefully 
by tomorrow, but hopefully, if not tomorrow, Monday for sure, as long as the testing comes through appropriately. If you have the application in place from the youth and you want to place them in a work site, you can go ahead and do that. Just please make sure that you keep uh, meticulous records so that you can then update the Illinois WorkNet site uh, with the appropriate dates. And I just, OK, how to, thank you. Uh, Chelsea just added the how to become a WorkNet partner in the file share pod below. And Tammy answered the same way about adding them to the uh, WorkNet site. OK, let's move the check ins back over. And uh, please check in before you log out for the day. If there are no other questions from the audience, we will be ending our recording. Please make sure that you have checked in before you leave. And we will see you again on July 8th at 2 o'clock for the violence prevention. This is available for youth and partners, so please have your youth sign up. We will be recording that session and posting it on the website for those who are unable to attend at that time. This is a good opportunity to have a little bit of classroom time discussion with your youth. So you may want to consider, um, if it's possible, pulling everybody into a computer lab by chance. So everybody have a great afternoon and a very safe and happy 4th of July. Thank you.